Hey folks, it's Brandon with Route to Adventure. Welcome back to another video. This time we're back in for part two of our Green River series. And uh, if you saw the first video, you'll remember that uh, we had some high winds and some interesting uh, wet weather to end our first day in town. Today we're going to pick up where we left off as we see the aftermath of uh, the overnight storm. So sit back, relax, and let's get on the trail. Uh, we are going to head out west again. You know, I-70, a few miles, we're gonna get off at Temple Mountain Road. This should be an exit this time, so no surprises. Um, exit 131. And we're gonna go do what, we're gonna go explore Red's Canyon, is what it's called. There's no real trail here, it's just a loop that somebody put together through um, this canyon. We should see some uh, old mining history, some more pictographs, and some petroglyphs. I believe we're going to swing by Swayze's cabin again. I don't know if Josh has been there or not, but it is along this route, so a lot of interesting things. Well, we'll see some mines, um, so we'll see what we can find. Sounds good. In the town of Green River, the storm wasn't too bad. We had a little bit of rain. Um, a little bit of hail, snow of an overnight, but it pretty much went away and it was just kind of a skip there. However, as we climbed in elevation towards Temple Mountain Road, it did change quite a bit. Uh, we did run into some snow and a little bit of slick roads. It's a little bit different today. We're in snow. <laughs> we left Green River and it wasn't too bad. I thought, uh, thought the roads would be pretty good today. Uh, but as we climbed out, to get the Temple Mountain Road exit, um, we climbed in elevation quite a bit. The temperatures dropped from 35 degrees to 28. And it's winter wonderland, but I suspect that this is going to burn off a little bit. It's supposed to be up in the 50s today, so maybe we'll uh, catch a break and hopefully not get stuck in too much mud when this uh, starts to thaw out. So we'll play it by ear and see how it goes. So let's hit the trail. We had been having a kind of a, a warm spell and we were hoping that we were going to have better weather but um, this kind of snowy weather wasn't really all that unusual for this time of year. We didn't let it get us down. In fact we enjoyed it because weather like this typically keeps people indoors rather than in the great outdoors. Kind of out here alone, breaking trail. Um, we followed some tracks in this morning, but I believe that was probably somebody camping last night got chilly and uh, bailed pretty early, which I don't blame them for. It's not terrible out here right now, but it's uh, it's not warm. And uh, since they were the only tracks, they were there when we pulled over um, just off of I-70 follow them all the way to this point so I have a feeling like I said if I was him and was camping I would probably I would have bailed last night too that was pretty pretty heavy winds and stuff but anyway I want to see what we're out here to see This first stop is at the Lone Warrior Pictograph. It's a, it's a well-known pictograph in the area. One that I had tried to find on a previous trip, but didn't make it, because uh, I couldn't find it. But I did this time. We're here very, not very, we're here fairly early in the morning, so it's difficult to see. So I get on this angle. Hopefully the camera picks it up better than I can see it in real life, but. Here's the Lone Warrior. That's pretty cool. I've been out in this area before near Swayze's cabin and it's been a while, but the map I was following said this was Swayze's cabin, but I think they've got it backwards. This is the Lone Warrior. I think Swayze's cabin is further up the canyon a little ways, so. I'm glad we stopped here and I walked through the snow to find it because I would have been disappointed if I hadn't seen it. So I missed it the first time, I didn't want to miss it this time. It's just another example of how amazing it is that 
these kind of things are still out there. And this one's fairly low. It's kind of eye level, so it's a pretty good one to get up close and personal to. And it's in a really neat little canyon uh, that looked really cool with the, the snow. And uh, we were having a great time already. And we just started. Now we stopped uh, at the parking lot where there's a few more pictographs um, located in the panel behind a fence uh, immediately adjacent to the parking lot. Uh, however, they are a little bit harder to see, um, especially in the morning sun like we were right here. They were almost invisible. Um, but the lone wire is actually a little further up the canyon past the uh, parking lot. So you want to make sure you look for that. Uh, this is going to be not at the parking lot. So keep moving forward. Look at the fence off in the distance. That's where the lone wire is. But these are also interesting to see. You can see how um, the weather has taken its toll on these particular ones. And uh, they're kind of fading away to history. Well, that's our first stop. It was neat. Uh, I liked that. Glad we finally got to see the warrior. So we'll uh, load back up and head to the next destination next destination maybe I can talk better if it's not so dang cold <laughs> well after a good little hike around looking at pictographs it was time to get to our next stop which was Swayze's cabin All right, so we're at Swayze's cabin now. Not too far from the Lone Warrior. And as I've been driving over here, I think I remembered the last time I was out here, I was trying to find the Lone Warrior. I couldn't because I think I just missed the turn. Um, and whatever map I was following at the time, we met here at Swayze's cabin. And then we continued on down this road behind me, which continues uh, westish through Eagle Canyon. And we never got even close to the Lone Warrior because, well, he was right here behind us. I, I had passed him. Eagle Canyon, that takes us up past, uh, um, I can't remember if it's the Eagle Arch. Or what. There's a there's a famous arch there um, that, if you've seen pictures of the San Rafael Swell, um, they, they, they show it quite often. Um, I've got pictures of it. I'll show it here. But it also takes you under I-70 and north uh, further into the San Rafael Swell um, on the north side of I-70. So now I see the error of my ways <laughs> from the last time I was out here. But uh, anyway, we're going to check out the cabin and uh, move on to the next stop. So let's do it. Swayze's cabin was built in 1921. And it was basically used for kind of a shelter for the family as they checked on their cattle uh, that grazed through the area back then. Today it's been uh, restored, taken care of, and uh, is here for all of us to see and check out. Check. I wouldn't recommend spending a night in here because I believe it seems to be a home for bats, but it's a cool place to stop and check out for sure. Whoa, I broke a hole in here? Hey, look! Don't eat it, gross. Kevin has been restored. They've done some stuff to uh, repair the roof um, to try and keep it uh, in good standing. We got a little snow monster with me, but uh, yeah, I could imagine being out here today. Somebody, if they were trying to live here full time, which I don't know if they did or if they just used this as a summer cattle type camp I don't know but uh could be some harsh conditions out here <laughs> I can tell you that it is getting warm out here by the way I figure when that sun gets up it'll dry up the landy land well it won't it'll probably make mud but it'll uh 
be a little bit more comfortable to be out and about. I am wearing two layers, even though it looks like I'm wearing one shirt. Nobody out here with us today, though. Pretty calm and quiet. Exactly what we were looking for. It was time to move on from livestock history to mining history. Again, the San Rafael Swell is full of mining activity from early 1900s into later, uh, mid-50s, even into the 60s. So it was time to go explore some of that history. been warned. Don't go into the... Don't do anything stupid, basically. The colors in Red Canyon are awesome. I mean, just the different layers, the, the colors, the reds, the yellows, contrasting against each other, and even the snow. It was really awesome. It was a gorgeous view, and I would highly recommend checking out this canyon because it is just a beautiful place to be. It wasn't long and we found some of the old buildings surrounding the Lucky Strike Mine. Much like the area surrounding Moab, San Rafael Swell was a boom for uranium. So most, if not all, of these mines are going to be uh, uranium mining. This one started in 1949. Uh, all the way up through the mid-50s during the boom of uranium. I find old mining towns interesting because it gives you an idea on how they lived and what they had back then, which is amazing because we are out in the middle of nowhere. There is nothing here. And there was nothing then. <laughs> what remains here is what is left over. I mean, I don't know how long this car's been there, but long enough that the sand is blown in there and just kind of created its own little world inside this thing. They even told the story of one, uh, like a telephone pole that ran up and over the mountain and to the nearest town just to get a single TV going with like a single TV channel. It was amazing what they had, but what... I mean, it, it is junk, and, you know, back then we weren't really great at cleaning up after ourselves, but to me it's still fascinating to see um, what remains. So checking out the remains of the Lucky Strike mine, which uh, was apparently most active between, like, 1955 and 1965. According to the sign I was reading, the claims here are still active, However, nobody's been mining anything in here for years. It's kind of interesting. Um, the history you see in the San Rafael Swell is immense. Obviously, we see the pictographs and the petroglyphs from, you know, 1,000 to 10,000 years ago, depending on which tribe made them. And then you've got more modern history with the mining and all the trash that we've left behind. You get to see a lot in this place. And it's uh, it's awesome. And it would be really unfortunate if this area got shut down. But uh, yeah, I like to see the history of all kinds. So seeing it here, having it still exist is, uh, it's cool to me. So. If you like this kind of thing, you should come check it out. Well, it's the end of this road. I'm sure I could crawl up there if I wanted to. There is some things up, up on top of there. They must have a different old road that I missed. Uh, but this just peters out. Probably could have drove up here if I wanted to. Had an ATV, but obviously some people have. You're gonna turn around right there, so. So 
somewhere above us. They're in there. I've seen the pictures. I just gotta find them. Hopefully I can. Take it back. Yep. Oh my son. All by yourself. I was hoping to find the shafts because there's pictures of shafts going into the mountain. But I got to the end of the canyon where it just gets, it just stops. So there's nothing up there. I see Nothing but junk. Some debris and crap up there. But Dad? No cat or the yeah. truck. No, no truck. I don't know where he's at. He might be around the corner. Yeah, that canyon didn't have uh, any mines for me to see. I'm sure there may have been some elsewhere. I found another canyon a little further up the road, and I decided to try and hike up to find some. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't get anything that was really impressive. And what I did find, I for lost the footage for, so... Just trust me, there are some things back there, and I'm sure there's more. I just don't know exactly where they are, and we were running out of time, so we kept moving. This is a dumb idea. <coughs> Up here in the <sighs> soft mud, it's not good. <laughs> it's all over my shoes right now, and everything had been pretty decent until right now. Now... No, it's not good. Yes, all I managed to find was mud and it stuck to everything. It was very bad. But I got a little bit of exercise in, I guess. We said goodbye to the Lucky Strike Mine and headed deeper into Red's Canyon. Eventually, we did find the truck that I was talking about, which was nowhere near where we thought it was, according to the pictures on that sign. Uh, and we stopped at Muddy Creek for lunch. I had two other mines that I wanted to check out while we were in town. Unfortunately, we were running out of time. We wanted to get back to town to get my brother back on the road because he was headed back to Salt Lake that night. So we packed up after lunch and decided to just head straight on back and just enjoy the views and not stop at any more mines. And of course, things didn't go as smoothly as we thought. Well, I don't know how to do that. You can either move it or go around it. Most people have been going around it. We can do that. Definitely can't push it. This rock had come down and blocked the road. Um, and normally I would just winch it and move it out of the way, but we were running out of time, so we didn't do it on this particular case. And then, just a few hundred feet down the road, we ran into another problem. We had we just went around a rock that we couldn't get around. And now, 100 yards down there, we got these trees blocking the road because of beavers. We should not have taken this way. <laughs> One more roll. I think rolling's easier than... Yeah. See what's around this next bit. The rocks are blocking that road. This is the road though, isn't it? There's just one single track down here, I don't know. I hope so. Yeah, it was the right road and having dealt with a couple of little obstacles, we were well on our way and had no other issues getting back to town. Back in Green River, we got a bite to eat at Ray's Tavern. Great burgers, by the way. And then we kind of drove through town, just kind of getting the lay of the land, get just a small ex exploration of downtown. We even found uh, the Spanish trail markers that uh, I keep coming across throughout the state. I've mentioned those in past videos, and uh, they're everywhere. Day three was going home day, and I had been wrestling all night on whether I was going to attempt to go through the San Rafael Swell to get there, or if I was just going to take the highways back. And uh, I kind of decided, what fun would it be to take the highway? So, 
ultimately I have decided we are going to attempt to make it through San Rafael as well to uh, Price to go home. We are breaking our own trail right now because I guess nobody else is probably dumb enough to come out here. Um, yesterday we were in a similar situation and there's two of us. I'm not too worried about it. This isn't a bad snowstorm. It's not you know six to twelve inches deep or anything like that. We've just got an inch or two out here just enough to cover the roads. The temperature's supposed to warm up anyway um, but I'm hoping to be home before it gets that warm anyway. Um, so this will give us a unique perspective on what things look like in the winter time and I'm kind of excited to see it. Here we go. And it is so, so beautiful out there. Yes, it is. Lots of new ones. It's a brand, brand new one, though. Oh, look, there's another little one right there. So, seeing cows isn't a unique thing uh, out here in the desert. It's just another fact of life out here that ranching and the cowboy way is still alive um, but what is unique is I mean one of those I don't know if it, there was quite a few babies there and another one that looked like she was about to, to give birth and there's a pretty good chance that we were the first people they've ever seen <laughs> which uh, kind of weird to think about actually getting closer to civilization we've seen a couple of vehicles now and uh, we're just about to pavement um, I had a great time traveling through there it was a unique perspective something I haven't seen before and um, for 90% of the morning so far we were all by ourselves out there checking out kind of quiet serene territory uh, turns out not a lot of people like to go out and play in the snow <laughs> But uh, anyway, yeah, it's, um, it's been a good time. If you haven't been down in the San Rafael Swell area, I would highly recommend coming down here. There's uh, a ton of roads that we've left um, to explore, so we're going to continue to do that, bring you more information on some of the lesser known roads in the future. Uh, but for now, it's time to get home and just kind of relax for the rest of the day before going back to work. So. Catch up with you guys soon.